Listening to your goals and dreams is our top priority at West Tennessee Bank. Benefit from our more than 100 years of experience and visit our Henderson branch today. West Tennessee Bank, focused on you. West Tennessee Bank is a division of Decatur County Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. We do have a quorum present, therefore we can officially call our meeting to order and continue with that. Our first thing tonight is we need a recommendation to accept the board agenda. I like a recommendation to accept the board agenda. All right, is there any discussion on that? All right, there's no discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? It is uh, accepted and the agenda is set. First thing is our consent agenda. Uh, we need approval for that tonight. I'd like a motion to approve our consent agenda. All right, motion has been made and seconded. There is no discussion on that item. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Right, it is uh, approved. Uh, there are no scheduled delegations uh, tonight uh, at the committee to set that up. So we'll move into our spotlight and celebrations. And I'll turn that over to Troy for our introductions. This past, well, it was actually the day after our last meeting is when they made it public for the state on the report card. This is where across the state we can compare our academic results with the TCAP and the EOCs that were done last spring with other school districts. Looking at those comparisons, I've asked Dr. Maurice to give some guidance, really for the benefit of all of our family and our stakeholders, because this is public access for all. But in some cases, I would assume that some don't know where, where to go to find this data. But uh, he's going to point out some examples that uh, cause or show that Chester County did really well last school year. We've talked about it before. He's done a presentation when we were at the junior high that month. Uh, but this also gives you another location of where you can find a lot of this key informative data. All right, so I wanted to make sure that everybody knew um, where to go to find this information. All of this information is available. You can look it up yourself. It's available on the state website. Uh, it's reportcard.tnedu.gov, and that'll take you to the main page for the state report card. From there, you're able to do several things. Number one, if you just want to have a little background information on what the state report card is, how to better understand what the things that you'll see mean, um, they do a really good job of providing that information on that main page. You'll see district information. You'll also see school level information. So um, Chester County as a district will receive um, their own page and then each school that we have within the district We'll have a separate page that stakeholders can go to to look at a, a wide variety of information. There's not just um, academic things on that particular website. There's a finance piece, a staff piece. Uh, it's a very informative tool. So um, the easiest way that I've found to um, find Chester County is just to click on your school district. And that takes you to where you can enter Henderson, Tennessee in the search bar. Chester County will immediately pop up. And you'll see on the main page, Mr. Kilzer has um, a quote with some information um, about our state report card. The first thing that you'll notice, this is where traditionally the letter grade would be. Right now that grade is an H, which means held harmless. Because we reached our 80% requirement from the state of Tennessee, that data was um, not held for or against our, our teachers in our district. Um, I anticipate in coming years as data returns and we return from some normalcy with that testing and assessment program that we will see a letter grade in the coming years, uh, both at the district level and at the school levels. Um, a couple of things to um, go over. We, we can see on the different tabs, we've got the performance indicators um, this is where you'll see the academic information, information about our various success rates. Other indicators that I mentioned, there's a finance piece, there's also a staff piece, and then there's just overall district information. But to kind of focus on the academic achievement, it does a great job of showing where Chester County falls in relation to the state. Um, and our overall success, as you can see, um, TCAP uh, participation rate, we were above the state, and our success rate of 37.9, the state of Tennessee is at 27.8. So 
So Chester County is doing a great job with our success rate in comparison to um, the overall state as a whole. It also breaks it down into various subgroups so that we can see that information. It breaks it down also into achievement level by subject. So when stakeholders are looking for how well does Chester County um, instruct students in English language arts, it breaks it down to that level as well. Um, social studies, specifically, Chester County is 49.3%, whereas the state of Tennessee is at 36.7%. Um, in achievement for ELA, we are 36.5% to the state's 29.8. In achievement for math, we had a success rate of 38%, state of Tennessee's at 25.9. Another thing to look at would be our ready graduate information. For our ready graduates, Chester County is at 55.2% and the state of Tennessee is at 40.5. So again, under our ready graduate data, we're outperforming the state. And if I could pause you just for a second, Steve, did you see the graph to the right? It also tracks and again, in regards to how our performance is done over the last few years, in most of the data reporting, you'll see a drop, a slight drop, sometimes more significant when you include last year's COVID year. But notice that with this, even with the COVID year, uh, we've had a steady increase with our ready graduates. These are the students who earn either a 20, uh, 22 or higher on their ACT before they graduate. And if they don't do that, they also earn at least four early post-secondary opportunity courses, credits in, which can be dual enrollment courses. It can be courses that kind of close out a program of study in the CTE program. It can also include a uh, TCAP program of study. So we have tried to continue to raise the bar of the number of kids who may or may not want to go to some type of higher ed institution after to have viable certifications that they can earn or be close to completing their earning before they leave high school set. And that's part of the measure being recorded here. One thing I wanted to make sure to mention is this graduation rate number, because I think it's something that we can very much celebrate. Chester County has a graduation rate of 96.1%. The state of Tennessee, their graduation rate is 89.6. So Chester County definitely outperforming. I think we have a commitment at not just our high school level, but at all levels to make sure that we do our best to keep our kids in school and to help our kids at least graduate, have some sort of a path after high school um, and, and create productive members of our community that we can be proud of. Um, I think the emphasis on the fact that our product is our students, um, and we try to do the best that we can. And I think that graduation rate really speaks to that, that we don't give up. We, we give every child the opportunity to meet that goal. Um, and I, I think as you can see, based on 96.1 to the state's 89.6, I think that's pretty impressive. A couple of other things, um, I'm not gonna go into them specifically, but you've got your chronically out of school. Again, Chester County, 14.7% to the state's 15.5. In that instance, we want to be lower. We want to have a lower chronically out of school rate than the state. And then our achievement dropout rate. Again, this is one where we want to be lower than the state. We are at 3.9% to the state's 6.7%, which again, I think is incredibly important. Again, just to kind of give you a highlight of, of what the tool is, I'm, I, I don't want to take a too much of your time, but I do want to make sure that I emphasize where stakeholders can go to find this information. And that's reportcard.tn.edu.gov. Um, all of the information there is public. You can look it up at the district level, look it up at each school level. Um, and I think it's a very valuable tool that, that we can glean a lot of good information from. Anybody have any questions? Thanks, Steve. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Our next item on the agenda is we had um, our policy subcommittee meet. Uh, and we have some recommendations from that subcommittee to our current uh, board policy manual. If you want to touch on those instances. Well, and during this time, we were uh, looking at, well, this first one came from our um, 
review of section three policy manual. Uh, and in that section, this 3.301, as the narrative provides in your uh, description, the policy seems to be in error because it just stopped with the, the information being shared without punctuation. So I went back to ask the TSBA to provide us a draft, and the draft was also what's included uh, with your plan without the Chester County Board of Ed moniker. So uh, from the committee of Mark and Becky and myself, it is from the committee's position to approve the replacement of our incomplete 3.301 uh, to be replaced with the updated version of the TSBA draft model for the same policy. The content appears to be following the same thread, so there's no new information added to it other than just adding some completion to the policy. And then the other policy 4.2010 credit recovery. This came on behalf of TSBA contacted me uh, after they had did completed a policy manual audit. They do that yearly as part of our subscription to see if there's any policies that are are uh, not consistent with course the current legislation. And this one is one that has recently changed, but it's only been a section of it changed. Uh, for some of you who came in later, I did not mention, but I included uh, along with your packet. I know in your packet you had credit recovery, you had the draft that was provided without the Chester County handle at the top. But I also gave you uh, on the at your seat the current Chester County Board of Ed Policy 4.210. The only thing that changed with that is reflected in the grades, which is on page two. The, the uh, State Board of Education has ruled with new legislation that the grades that a student can earn in credit recovery now can only be a grade if they pass it, a grade of a 70. It's not where in the past you could take a percentage of their grade that they failed, they have to score at least a 50 through a 69 to qualify to take credit recovery. But in the past, if they earned a credit through credit recovery, whatever that score was in that setting would represent a certain percentage. At Chester County, we had it at 75%. And then their previous grade they failed would count the other 25. But they did not give any required percentage breakdown. And I'm sure that some felt like that those, because of the inconsistency across all the districts doing it a little bit different, they felt it needed to be a little bit more uniform. I don't support it, but that's the state law. So the TSBA made the recommendations that we, well, we have to change it, the state law. I mean, it's not like an option. So that was the audit and what their finding was. So again, the policy committee supports that we accept this uh, TSBA draft to replace the current Chester County Board of Ed Policy 4.210. Okay, and being that that recommendation comes from the policy subcommittee, there is no uh, need for a second, but is there any discussion or questions about it prior to voting? Um, <clears throat> one question I have, I think I read it, that uh, the credit recovery, the NCAA does not adhere to <clears throat> someone taking a credit recovery course, is that did I read that or not? I, um, why? I don't recall that being. Now, I do know that the NCAA does report, well, as it says here in section one, uh, that not all. Yeah. Okay. It's not it that, but not all of them accept. So, again, okay. this is a conversation that our high school guidance counselors have with those guys and girls, especially those who have some athletic ability. Right. Right. We've had that happen in years past that they would have to take some summer courses. And it, it, it gives a stickier issue because you think that if you satisfy a public school's requirement for graduation, you satisfy everybody. Yeah. It's not the case. And the same thing is true for some online coursework too. Uh, people uh, sometimes leave the public school setting, go online thinking that was satisfied. That too sometimes do not satisfy the NCAA clearing. You can play sports. You just can't play with the NCAA, but the NAIA does not have any ruling like that as far as I know. Any other questions? All right. 
is uh, well, there's uh, again no no motion or a second needed, so we'll proceed to vote on those recommendations from the subcommittee. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, they are approved. Also, our capital projects subcommittee uh, has met, and they have a recommendation to present tonight in regards to the uh, offer additional offer that was approved last month from the Arendal West family. And that property purchase, uh, there's an additional offer that has been uh, sent to us and to bring before the board. Uh, again, this was a meeting that occurred with Mr. Nars, Mr. Ben, and myself. Uh, I guess it's Friday, last like Friday, wasn't it? And in this conversation, of course, the Matthew West, who represents the family trust, had approached uh, Shane and I after we had closed the deal on the 58 counter offer to include that two acres for what I assume based on the count of adding up the numbers. He's trying to get as close as he could to the original appraised value of the property. Um, so with that being shared uh, with what I gave you to review from the email that we received uh, his asking price of 265,000 seemed to be pretty steep. So after Shane and I reviewed that and had a little consultation, I sent him a text back saying, thanks for the offer, but that's a little bit richer than what we want to spend. Plus we knew and still know that there are some, uh, to get that location uh, construction ready, there's still some work to do. We talked about the sewage line there runs from what you say from east, no, east, no, west to east, from highway 100 to Forth, that we would have to change its path and that's going to be that's not going to be a cheap venture but anyway in that conversation through the capital project uh mr norris made the recommendation that it comes before the full board to find out what your interest was but to make a counter offer to them of uh, no greater than seventy five thousand dollars what is the what is the value of those two acres to our school system in your opinion? In my opinion, it's there's not value. But now that's my opinion. Again, the argument, Norris, I think echo the same thing that Matthew said to us. It gives you a, a, a better entry point that you can have off of the Highway 100. Again, my view is, is I want to steer clear of Highway 100 and focus more on 4th Street as an effort to bring in as the main entrance when that school setting is developed. Less traffic in that. Right, sure. Jack so it's not a necessarily value for entry and, lane because and of the traffic. There is a street already there. So it's, it's not like we're buying the property to, to gain street access because there is a street there without having to buy any more property we have access We have that without the first. Right. This is just a, an opportunity for the board to review fully. Right. For everybody to have input. So. Well, it was a decision that Mr. Norris had that it needs to come to the exactly. board before we just cut off and say no. Thank sure, you. absolutely. Is there any? Well, my thinking was, of course, it's just a narrow street. Mm -hmm. And for a school bus to go down it, really, it would need to be wide. Mm -hmm. So, and the house, well, that is on the, so it would have to be coming down. So it's just the right of way really is all we're fine. But uh, what 265,000 was it was his last offer for 75 maybe. And, and un, unrealized by all, it's still an offer that stands because I did talk to India just a few days ago. So it's still a, an offer to us, just to let you know. The dwelling is, is not worth it. Right. right. It would be cleared regardless. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so it's worth less to us than to them, obviously. Any other uh, discussion on that? Is there any motion that needs to be made? If not, we will move forward uh, with no action on that agenda. Okay. Uh, so with that, I guess uh, I will contact, contact I will contact Matthew West to say after deliberation. Still hold true to what we said. Okay, thank you. Um, we also have this is an annual uh, recommendation that we have to approve for the uh, board for the 2021 2022 LEA compliance report. 
and then Troy will describe that a little bit. For those who've served on the board multiple years, this is something that we have each year that comes up. There are statutes, requirements by law that we have to follow as a school district. There is a litany of things that we have to check through, check off the boxes. And the state department of ed just asks for us to provide this document that proves that we are still abiding by all the requirements in our public setting, such as attending school as we should, having the requirements for the certain number of, of uh, hours per work week, like for physical activity. Those are just two things that off the top of my head. Um, this document, um, not like every year before, but now they want to make sure that it's included in the board minutes. So um, it is only requirements to have a signature of the superintendent and the board chair, which it's already been signed in preparation for this. Tomorrow I'll scan it. But I'm just letting you know that we follow. We're in full compliance with what we have to be as a school district. And it's a formality that it just requires of us each year. And the deadline is by the end of November. So this is the best meeting spot to go ahead and do that and get it out of the way. We have a motion to, uh, to approve this recommendation for the LEA compliance room. Second. That motion has made and second. Any further discussion or questions? If none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it is approved. <laughs> Uh, you see in front of you a list of some updates um, that really require no action, but just some updates for the board um, of activities since last meeting. Is uh, any questions or any comment on any of them? If you have it in front of you, this, this um, some of uh, some of our capital project activities and things of that nature. Uh, do you have any questions about it? If I may, well, if I may say, um, I mentioned to Ben, to Norris, and then also to you, uh, Shane, about the bid opening that you had uh, for the Jacks Creek uh, modular building structure. Initially, we had two bid all openings or two bid offers at the opening, uh, but I've asked Britt to be here to kind of add the narrative to it because he had a conversation with one who came in with a little bit cheaper bid proposal. It was about 20,000 less approximately, but uh, if, if that's acceptable, sure. for it to go ahead and add a little bit more to the narrative. Yeah, the, I think Norris and I don't know, seen the floor plan that we were looking at, but the two bids that came in, the cheaper one, of course, when I was, I got both bids to compare for apples to apples, just make sure it was the same. To bring that modular up that hill at Jack's Creek, buses if you don't go in correctly will drag up the so the company that come and looked at it's it's going to take eight sections of the modular brought up and then put together on site the other company that did a little cheaper he didn't come look at the site he assumed it was flat and had it coming in at four trailers at 64 feet long and he would have he wouldn't have been able to do it and i showed him up front and said i think you know if you didn't look at it and he just said there's no way i can beat that price and do that so he withdrew so the one i've been working with they've been very uh, helpful and forthcoming so I, I think it's a good bid for what we're going to get replacing the, the three structures with four classrooms and very little loss of space it's actually going to gain space for jack's crew and if you folks remember when we first sat down with an architectural agency who offered us the quote initially, it was over a million dollars to do this job. Now, I know the million includes more than it included the demolition and the removal, but still, uh, it was quite a pricey venture with them. And since this working with this specific company, following the, I asked the fire marshal what options we had back last spring. And he offered us to go directly to these Tennessee based modular structures that can follow or satisfy the fire marshal's requirements. And, you know, here we are now at about 350,000. So a sizable lot less than what we originally thought. I think the original was 1.4. Yes. And we still got to get a construction company to clear the spot, get it ready. 
and then hook the plumbing and electrical up when it comes in. And we're still going to address the cafeteria. Okay. Still, that's going to come in a whole lot less. It's still going to yeah. Good. Any other questions or, or updates? Any other things that needs to come before the board? If not, I'll share that our next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, November the 18th. We will be all site for the next meeting, and meeting uh, spotlight will be on Westchester Elementary School, uh, November the 18th. That's where we'll be meeting at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Mr. Is there a motion that we adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn. We are adjourned.